Hello everybody, and uh, welcome back to another Find the Computer LP of a uh, of a questionable game where Sonic picks his nose. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> welcome to the FTC LP of Sonic and the uh, Black Knight. I'm going to be honest. Um, uh, most people hate this game. I am not one of them. I actually think this is a pretty decent little uh, game for the Nintendo Wii, and uh, we're joined today by some guy named Donnie. I don't know. I see Sky. It's a brilliant game. You're totally <laughs> ripping off someone's username. Jesus. Some call me Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> we're already going to get sued, and we're not even a minute in. Oh, I, I'm a Kenos fan. I played this game. Literally. I played this game. I want to know how the hell did Donnie outrank Chris there? That don't, that don't make any sense. He's 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 the guest. He's the guest, I guess. I guess so. So recently we've been. LP in games we think are bad that everyone in the comments has been like, oh, I actually like this game. Well, now we're playing a game everyone hates that we actually like. Because <laughs> <laughs> you all suck, not really. Uh... My name is FTCR, or Sir FTCR. So FTCR, Night of the Computer Room, and we are knaves, hooray. <laughs> I will say, I think, um, in terms of production value, this is actually one of my favorite little uh, Wii games. Because, like, all of the menus look awesome, mm -hmm. and there's a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of, like, um, effort went into making this kind of look like authentically Celtic and sounding Celtic. Like, all of, in fact, the, um, the main menu music is actually a piece of music called the Ash Groove, which is a uh, traditional Welsh, like, theme. Mm -hmm. Right. So, a lot of, lot of good, lot of good stuff went into this. Sharp. I like that. Sharp. Yeah, the, the, the reason I left all this crap in is just because I wanted people to look at the menus, because I actually really do like it, just like you. And I'm just showing off that. I think this was the first game to have all these language options, too, for subtitles. At least in the NA release. Yeah, because normally it's it pretty much just America and um, Japan, if you're lucky. You know, this is, um... This is actually, I think, a pretty, pretty good little cutscene. Mm -hmm. I think it was. I think it was the first time they directly acknowledged, like, in Unleashed, you could buy chili dogs for Sonic and give it to him or Chip. Here, you can actually see Sonic eating a chili dog. Which I thought was amazing. The, the, there was this weird kind of progression of that. The first reference of that really was um, apparently on the Japanese website for Sonic Advance 3. They did list Chili Dogs as his favorite food. And then of course, as uh, Don said in Unleashed, you could buy them. And in this one, you know, you could see a meat one, which would be which would be followed up in games like um, Generations. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Ugh, my waifu is under attack. <laughs> Shut up, flame. <laughs> Anime. Uh, <laughs> now we'll say this. Um, what we're hearing now, the Black Knight's theme, as it were, actually makes it a pretty decent. It only comes up like three times. But I think it's a pretty decent piece of uh, music. This spell is, I believe, it's what's um, it, it's used in Secret Rings, and I forget the exact. Con I believe it's what is used to summon the um water Ifrit. I remember the first time, but this made me crack up laughing. <laughs> it's like <laughs> all of all of the sound disappears, and you see Jason Griffith go ah. No, I know. Um, I know. It, in in some circles, some people um didn't at the time. I kind of still don't like Jason Griffith, and I fully admit I may be a bit biased because I, I met the man and I really like him. But I will say this: I think is that is his hands down his best performance as Sonic. It was also technically his last, wasn't it? I think after this. I think this was the last original work he did. Technically, All Stars Racing One came out after this, but I believe that this used um, old voice clips. Yeah, they used old uh, voice clips from 06. Everyone's favorite game. I I do think it's his best performance too. I think sometimes it's a little awkward, but I think that's probably down more to <laughs> voice direction. And oh my god, I wish I could do that. <laughs> I know. It right? saves so much time in the morning before work. <laughs> No, this um this CG actually isn't Blur Studio. No, so uh, isn't actually um uh, Mars or Planet or at the time it, as it was known VE Studios. It's actually a um a separate company. It always makes me laugh when like Sega. Cause I would imagine that's probably for a budget reason. Sega couldn't afford their own company to make you know cutscenes for their own games. I don't know why, but uh, I remember the first time I thought that was like the coolest thing. You just like balancing that shitty <laughs> dog on his knuckles. I don't know why I thought, I thought that was pretty cool. I was going to say, even if they did have to go to someone else for the animation, you can't really complain with the uh, final product. It's pretty nice looking. 
It's pretty good. It, it's, it's it's the um, same company who did the um, CG for Secret Rings. But I like um, if you look at the um, final cutting for Secret Rings, I do think there's some slight issues with Sonic's model, like the way he's animated, the way he speaks. Um, this doesn't share that issue. And then suddenly, other yeah, Sonic characters. <laughs> I remember one of my favorite one of my favorite like um, memes online. So it was a picture of these three. Like the uh, Knights of the Round Table, and uh, the caption was just, and you thought the werehog was stupid. <laughs> that was just gonna make me laugh. I love that he has a flying horse. I mean, that's just. <laughs> I know, all right. <laughs> it's also weird because, um, like, it's called the Black Knight, but his armor is technically gold if you look at it. It's just game should be called Sonic and the Golden Knight. Maybe it's referring to his heart. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get too close to me, you'll freeze! Seeing them talking with these giant, like, faceplates on them is so weird, and yet amusing <laughs> at the same time. This cutting is an, is an accurate depiction of uh, England's weather. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that at, at this point in time, obviously, um, uh, no no game would... This game came out after Unleashed, and Unleashed was the first game to use an actual orchestra for certain points, but, um... This game uses all like synth work, but because Richard J um, Jake, Sonic Car Man, worked on it, the the like fake synth is top notch. It sounds. This is prob this is probably the best sounding fake orchestra they've ever had in a Sonic game. Mhm. Mm <laughs> That's what I have to say about that. Mhm. Mm <laughs> it's funny too because when after Unleashed pretty much brought me into modern Sonic um, at that time. I eventually heard about Black Knight, and I thought, wait, there, Sonic's in Black Knight? What, what is this? What? So I, I eventually got it on release day, and I loved it, and it actually did pretty much confirm me being a modern Sonic nerd uh, for the next six years. So <laughs> I will say, these, um, these kind of uh, stylized storybook cutscenes, massive improvement over the ones in Secret Rings. Oh, yeah. Ones in Secret Rings, I think, are, are so boring to look at. This, these ones are awesome. These are awesome. very well stylized, and especially in some of the last cutscenes like that, they'd have a really great use of color, and it's really striking and unique. Well, the good thing about that is that, like, is that there's there's actual movement in these. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the ones in Sonic in um, Secret Rings, there's you can sometimes just be just yeah, you can just be staring at a static image for quite a while with voice acting going over it. You know, yeah, the the cutscene. And, um, the cutscenes in Secret Rings are JPGs, so, uh, you know, these are actually animated, which I really love. This game is just better than Secret Rings by a long shot. Just yeah, I mean, everyone, I mean, I'll just sort of quickly say right off the bat, I mean, um, it, it just in the list of things that this game does way better over Secret Rings, this tutorial level is so much better than the tutorial in, in Secret Rings, it's not even funny. I will not miss any target. <laughs> I gotta Break say, when targets. this game came out, coming off of Unleashed, um, paying full price for this game, I I kind of regretted it, but now that we're here almost, what, six years later, I think? I, I like the game a lot more. I forgot the sting of the full $50 as a fort. How old was I even? 15? You're in now. Oh damn! I actually, um, I actually did pay for this game. I actually had this uh, game bought for me for the by the Sonic show when uh, N Tom and I did our LP of it. Oh, well, there you go. Oh, nice. But yeah, as a 15 year old dropping fifty dollars just a few months after dropping fifty dollars on Unleashed, yeah, it kind of stung with how short the game was. But you know, it's all I good will, now. I, 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 I will say, like, you probably get more value for your money in terms of content with Unleashed. But um, I I you know I probably I probably say this game quantity over but, quality kind of thing with that like this is yeah. more quality but that's more quantity. I think this is is when they start. I mean, this is made made obviously by the um, storybook te team who made Secret Rings and Colors, and I think this was when they kind of hit the good stride of it's a short game, but it's it's you have fun playing it. I mean, obviously not everyone did, and again, the critically this game is. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people don't like this game, which is, you know, it's all fine. It's all good in the hood. I mean, you're wrong and you're idiots, but that's fine. <laughs> it's all good in the hood. 
One thing, um, I've said this before, but one, I'm a stickler for, like, um, things that make sense, and, uh, a very small point, but in, in the first tutorial level, Sonic picks up the sword before he's told he needs the sword. Why? <laughs> why pick, why'd he pick it up for? Why'd he pick it up for? Yeah, I that used to bug I me, too. Uh, like from from what I saw, it was actually like a wooden sword. It wasn't actually Caliburn. So no, no, it's not. He doesn't. He doesn't see that. It's it's a sword. He, he just he just seems to always pick up the same rusted sword in the, in the ground. I I will say right off the bat, Misty Lake, the tune we play here and now, one of my favorite tracks from any Sonic game. Mm -hmm. And totally not a Pokemon reference at all. Yeah. <laughs> I think this this could be one of the um few, if not the only, tracks um, composed by Jun Sonoy where he doesn't play a single instrument. Hmm, that's interesting. No fact for you. Normally, no, well, obviously this doesn't have uh, guitars. I know Jun Sonoy, he can play bass and um, and piano. He, he very rarely do, does those um, for song track. He tends to stick to his guitars. You know what? It's embarrassing, and this is, if Smoovies was here, he'd laugh at me. Like, after, after this game came out, me and him were having a conversation about all of the um about all of I, I love the I love how the pictures disappear. <laughs> like not I would say not the best programming on that behalf. They just disappear a second after you after you to block them. Which that always gave me flashbacks. I forget Twilight Princess came out before this, right? Yeah, like I'm pretty sure it did. A few years. Oh yeah, of course. And like that always reminded me of Twilight Princess at the start. We have to like stop the pig from escaping. Um. It took me, uh, I'm about to say, it took me about two years to realize that Night of the Wind, Misty Lake, and Live Life will have the same melody, just played at different oh, speeds. Garrett. <laughs> I know, I know. I think, I think, I think the best thing about the soundtrack in this is that we actually get quite a bit of Crush 40 music, too, for the first time since Heroes. So. Mm. Well, I, no, this has the most Crush 40 songs. This has four. Um, There's Night of the Wind. Well, f actually, five, um, five on the soundtrack. It has, has Night of the Wind, Through the Fire, which is the track we're gonna hear when um, you fight the Round Table members, which is one of my favorite Crush Forty songs. Fight, fight the, the Night, the Nights, Live Life, and on the soundtrack you have the Crush Forty version of With Me. Yeah, they, I don't think they included the uh, With Me version. Oh, they Live Life. Don't forget Live Life. I said Live Life. Yeah, Donnie, don't forget him yeah. saying live life more life. Dumbass! Holy fuck, a dragon! <laughs> <laughs> this is the first boss? One thing I will say about um, Black Knight is that it, it, it does have a good handful of bosses. They tend to not be that impressive, I'll be honest with you. The dragon bosses in particular are kind of weak. Well, at least he doesn't in come opinion. in on a flying moon and take three hits. <laughs> of course, it does help that you only have to uh, deal with two of these guys. So, mm. I will say though, one of the um, I, I like this game, but I, I would admit there are some slight control issues. Where, as you're seeing with um, Chris playing this Sonic, he doesn't move as as uh, fluidly as he does in say a game like SA One or Generations. He's a bit stiff. Yeah, when you're locked on a 2D plane like that, when you're trying to go right, but you're also trying to attack, it just doesn't flow very well. So that's why I was stuck there for a little bit. Essentially, Sonic will always face forward. Um, so like you can't, you can't like turn to the right because obviously there was sections there where basically you're facing forward but you're still just stabbing the air even, even though the dragon is like to your right. Which don't always make a uh, heck of a lot of sense. I just wanted to say, yeah, I think I... Oh, sorry. But I, I think I leave a few in. Um, this game does have this crazy robust item system robust in the sense that there's a fuck ton of items i cut most of the that stuff out just because it's not really interesting to look at so if you see any sudden jumps after a level it's just me taking that out you know what this is one of my favorite i love that this is one of my favorite games for sonic's personality this that cutscene uh, Molina pretty much says yeah you're gonna have to kill someone so i was like sounds good to me oh, finally <laughs> let's do it <laughs> To be, to be goes fair, by the name really... Carrie Elwes. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I don't really think Sonic has ever condoned killing someone. It's just he's never really had that opportunity. <laughs> um, that, that what you what you just saw? That's the only cutscene where you see Caliburn's mouth um, visibly move when he speaks. Are you sure? 
pretty much like in a lot of mm. the other ones they don't they don't they don't show his mouth I, mean, like, I think that's the only time the only cutscene really where they do it for any character they don't normally show like the mouth moving yeah because later on he just kind of bounces yeah oh the final boss man this game is short <laughs> IG, IGN was right <laughs> 15 minutes for 50 bucks what the hell too much Arthur 7 out of 8 out of 10 <laughs> Seven out of eight out of ten. How do I fractions, Donnie? How do I fractions? Damn, this game's a two point five. It's IGN. <laughs> it's IGN. Now again, I, w I would probably say the um. I mean, the, the, these bosses are uh, um are okay, but it's kind of like Sonic takes out the Black Knight with this. It's not. It's probably one of the easiest bosses in the game. <laughs> the next time we fight this guy, it won't be so easy. But that's because of that Wii Remote gimmick being. Completely. Finicky. Yeah. Did you say that there's there's um I think my my earliest um record of beating the second Black Knight fight is like twenty four. Well, aren't you, Mister Great? Maybe you should have recorded this game. I did it once, and then I could never do it again. <laughs> I I seriously <laughs> suffer. I seriously suffer from the recording curse. Like I'm not good normally playing games, but I'm ten times worse when I say I'm gonna sit down and record first for no LP. Yeah, that's where I was with this game. <laughs> 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 but we'll, we'll get to that, boss. And and then there's me who can only record beans and spinball. GG me. Uh. You can only re record the games no one else wants to play. <laughs> so yeah, here, here's the item identification thing. Um, if you want, you can try and collect every item. Uh, I wouldn't bother if I were you. <laughs> Unless you want 100% it. I'm going to say, if you want... Um, if you want to, like... A see how that works in an LP, I'd say I'd recommend watching Clement's Black Knight LP. He actually goes through that. Go watch someone who actually tried with this game. <laughs> Eggman's cock! There's also, um... I I'm just gonna ask you guys, did you guys ever understand that follower system? Well, you see, nope. this was the time before I used a Twitter, so when I hear about followers, when I played that game, yeah, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and then Arthur just tweets him, fight. <laughs> he got he got retweeted twice. The one I mentioned earlier. What are we waiting for? Let's go pay her a little visit. He's just sending them hate tweets while he's running away. What do you mean? This was actually um this was was actually the first uh game in the in the full kids era to use non full kids voice actors. I believe I, I, I'm i pretty sure it's Black Knight, Caliburn, and Melina are voiced by non 4 kids actors. They may be Studiopolis. I will double check that before the next part, which Studiopolis is the uh, company that handles the voice acting in the um, current games. It might be. I don't know about Caliburn, though. No. Like, that's an actual big name actor. I don't know how they got the budget for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, who's. Okay, so, so uh, Chris, who is. See, now, I know him from The Cat Returns, where he plays the main cat, but he's in The Princess Bride as, um, Wesley? What's oh. his name? Kind of the main character, uh, well, I guess one of the main characters. No, whoa, 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 whoa. You've seen Princess Bride, right? He's the, um, guy who says, as you wish, and falls in love with the lady at the beginning. I, I haven't seen it at all. So, Robin from Robin Hood Men in Tights? Uh, yes. Are you shitting me? No, that's him. That's, oh my! That's all. Well, let's be fair, right? He ain't really done much since Princess Bride, so you know. <laughs> He'll stoop to a but still that, That's all. Well, hey, Lacey Chabert was in 06, all right, and she's been an actual big budget movie, so sure was. That was tight. Or just made it. Just made it. Woo! Also, uh, going back to um, I I will say, Sonic games on the Wii tended to look pretty damn good, and they, they tended to be some of, of, of the best looking games. I still think black certain levels in in this game, um, specifically when we get to say Molten Mine, I think they just look fantastic. Mm. Yeah, playing through this game again, I was actually kind of taken aback sometimes. I didn't remember how good this game can look. It doesn't always look that good, but when it wants to, it actually it's actually rather impressive it's because the sonic team have always had this thing where they will like 
they'll push they'll push the limits of a system for like certain effects but then you just like a lot of times they'll use really subpar textures in, in sections well like it's always it's always like a hit and miss game with them in terms of what the hell like how they push it like their games graphically forgive me sonic but i would be recognized in town i shall remain behind in hiding all right then i guess it's so long for now I will say this. Um, this is probably in terms of again. Um, I don't. I don't play games for stories, let alone a Sonic game for a story. But this is probably one of my favorite uh, story slash scripts in the game. I actually think the um, story actually plays out pretty well in this game. I, I do like the story in this game, and it didn't have anything to do with me hundred percenting the game either. You know, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I did actually hundred percent this game. I got every item that, that you could identify. I got all the special stuff, like the Waxmas right. shit, whatever they are. Uh, <laughs> I forget. There's too much shit in this game. Uh, we need to force you to record the extra stuff, is what you're telling me. Um, well, I will say, uh, it's got Camelot Castle, I think, is... Is, is freaking amazing in terms of its of its uh, music track. I love the fact that it has this kind of like hard guitar sound, and then about two minutes in, breaks down to a random fiddle. Oh yeah, uh, like it's so out of place. It's, it's fantastic. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> I love how diverse the music is in this game. I will say I, I I do like you know the um you know obviously like kind of like like the theme for this game was kind of the tradition of sonic rock but they did put in kind of you know a um a kind of celtic touch as well and like a lot of the, a lot of the tracks you'll find that have like the traditional sonic guitars like like this one like if you if you remove the um violin this could be just in, in kind of like a, a regular sonic game mm -hmm. but the violin i think this makes it stand out so much yeah if it didn't have the violin it just uh, it'd just be a kind of eh, rock song i think but i find that this game doesn't have too many um, standout music tracks for me personally, but I do really admire the um, versatility of the soundtrack, I guess is a good word for it. Didn't they use the violin for uh, uh, Spagonia and Unleashed? Well, I mean, I mean, like, Sonic tracks had had um, violins before for, for, uh, for certain tracks, but, like, it, they never used it as kind of, like, like uh, the overall style of the game. As it were, because I mean, obviously they are going for a Celtic st um, yeah. sound with the soundtrack, and if it, I'd, I mean, I can't ever see them doing a, you know, obviously Sonic goes back to the, uh, you know, time of King Arthur, but I'd love a, I like a throwback to the sound again in a, another soundtrack. They could do a Celtic-ish styled level someday, I think, and get away with it, just randomly in some game. I mean, if we can run around on giant Twizzlers and donuts and shit in the Lost World, I don't see why we can't have another Celtic level. <laughs> Now, in terms of the uh, control, I think uh, but my, I think it's, it's something that I know Smoothies and I keep bringing up that we think Secret Rings is the worst game in the franchise, bar none. Obviously, a lot of people would be like, I "Hope you do up 06, and I will lose." But for me, oh, like Secret Rings, just the control is is so bad in that game, mm -hmm. and and for me, control is everything. I mean, I can I can even overlook. I mean, that, that's kind of why I'm kinder to something to a game like Boom, where you could argue it's kind of really mediocre level design. Just because control-wise, it's a pretty, it's not that bad. And oh, there we go, it's Tails. That's not Tails, that's the Smithy. That's the Smithy! I will say, I, I'm not sure why he chose to do this, but I love the fact that June Sonoy kind of, um... He kind of does throwback music tracks, so we get this nice kind of Celtic version of the, um... SA1, uh, believe it in myself. So, yep. again, no idea why he, he chose why he chose this game. To, like, I'm gonna throw back to it, but I'm, in a game where Sonic travels to the night city of the Round Table, I'm gonna reference one of our old songs. I have no idea why he chose this one for that, but it works so well. I say, I th it, I, for my, it's, it's kind of a shame that the. Uh, this was the last proper game the four kids cast did because I think obviously you know Unleashed and this they were they were pretty damn good. I you know if they would have kept up this quality of acting I'd be fine. I would have been fine if the four kids cast them. Um, like, it really stinks that it took probably uh, what was like four or five years for them to finally get that momentum and 
figure out just how they wanted to voice their respective characters, but at the same time, I mean, I, I do have to commend them for ending on a high note. I mean, it, it would have been much more annoying for them to get pushed away for the uh, current cast, and them not doing as well compared to now where they were, uh, they actually did finish their final few games on a good note, so... Yeah, like, it, it would have sucked if their, like, last game was, like, all sex or riders, you know? <laughs> yeah. It said, you know, swords. Swords. But, yeah, um, go, going back <laughs> going back to gameplay, it's kind of... It's, the, uh, the the level design is, um, isn't is that dissimilar to uh, Secret Rings, where, like, it, they kind of... You're kind of, kind of constantly on these kind of, like, Crash Bandicoot-esque straight lines mm -hmm. kind of like you kind of always in, in like a narrow hallway but the big difference is and what makes this you know so much better than secret rings is you are not constantly moving forward mm. which secret yeah. rings would be a average game if you weren't constantly moving forward rather than just the worst game ever made in typical FTCR fashion we haven't talked about the basic gameplay in the first part uh I think this game would be a lot. You're flinging a sword. What can basic gameplay is this? <laughs> swinging the sword. I was just about to say, playing this game again, the one thing I would change, it's kind of a typical Nintendo Wii complaint, but I would definitely give this game a sword swing button because I don't know. I just feel constantly pressured to shake the Wii remote, just because attacking is just generally a good idea in this game. So you know, my my, my little arm gets tired. <laughs> yeah, I, I I will say that is um it didn't bother me so much on the first go, but on my when I came back to this um after a few years, I did I was like, man, this game wears out your arm. Yeah, I was I was the same way. Like my arm got worn out pretty quickly, especially in the King Arthur fights, because you're really having a swing in that. We're such and fucking nerds. And then oh I played God. Sonic Free Riders. It's like yeah. it's like damn man, my hand hurts too hard to masturbate now. It's like what the fuck, damn you, Sonic in a black mode. <laughs> And then Sonic Free Riders came out and it just completely crippled my body for three days. Well, let's let's not talk about Free Riders. Let's not talk about Free Riders. We no we, no we, we've we've already touched that game. Never again. Never again. So Chris, did you want to quickly explain about about what we're doing now? No, but I'll do it anyway. So <laughs> in Secret Rings, Sonic had the Soul Gauge thing, which let him do hyper speed before unleashed. In this game, you use um, the is it still called the Soul Surge? I spaced out. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so yeah. you hit the um, B button on the Wii Remote. Sonic kind of goes slow mo and walks on to the next enemy. Um, there's a targeting reticule. You made me explain this in the last ten seconds. You fool. Um, <laughs> it's a timing thing. When the reticule glows gold, you want to swing the Wii Remote. You'll hit the enemy. You'll get your Soul Gauge back most of the way from where you were. If there's no enemy in sight, Sonic boosts the head, and that's the Soul Gauge. What an exciting end to this part. I will say, massive, massive improvement of over it in Secret Rings. I would say pretty much everything in this game was a big improvement over what came before it in Secret Rings. Chris's commentary is, uh-oh, gotta speed up. Uh, yeah, I do consider Black Knight loads better than Secret Rings, even though I still find the controls iffy, and that's pretty much my biggest pet peeve about this game. But overall, I do consider this game very nice, and I'm glad that this was the game that pretty much, like, cemented my uh, uh, love for modern Sonic and just bringing me back to Sonic as a whole, because when I think Sonic the Hedgehog, I think swords, which was probably the biggest thing everyone <laughs> complained about back then was just, Sonic's got a sword, it sucks. So, essentially, we have, this game is to blame for you being well, here Well, fuck right this now. game! I wish I could go back, I wish I, I wish I could go back in time and destroy this game. <laughs> it was it was Unleashed that actually technically introduced me to modern Sonic and got me into it, but this was the one that cemented it. I can't wait to see the comments for this video. I hate you, Donnie. End of part. <laughs> I love you too. Bye bye. Eggman's cock.